Hi, and welcome to the Event Lighting Channel. Welcome to our podcast series, our videocast series of uh, Show Me Your Grain MA3 workflow. Today's guest is Thomas. Thomas is uh, a German guy living in Russia at the moment. Uh, he is a very skilled Grain MA3 programmer, and if you are in any of the uh, uh, Grain MA3 forums out there, you will often see Thomas answering questions for everyone. And uh, Thomas is also part of our Discord server here on the Event Lighting channel. There is a link down there in the description if you want to join. It's absolutely free and you are more than welcome. And if you are lucky, uh, Thomas will be helping you out answering your questions. So uh, this episode is a two-part episode. Uh, the first part is Thomas's like his back end, how he sets up everything uh, before he starts running his show, how everything is referencing each other, how he uses macros how he uses uh, variables, how he uses all kinds of different techniques to, uh, to make his show work. Next week, we're going to continue on the same show file where he's going to show us the, uh, the, like the front end of his, uh, his show file and how he actually operates the show. So I hope you're going to get some value out of this video. I know I certainly did. So let's welcome Thomas. And uh, hi, Thomas. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you. Hi, Ty. Let's, uh, let's uh, hear a little bit about you. How old are you? Where do you live? You can see on the screen you're in Moscow, Russia. Could you maybe explain <laughs> a little bit about yourself and, and, and why you're in Moscow? Oh, yeah, it's a, it's a nice situation. Um, I do this uh, event technology for... Let's. I started with it as, as a hobby, and um, my original work is I'm video engineer for a German TV company. And we have a studio in Moscow, and I'm working here now since five years. But this is my last year, and I will return to Germany and finally have a lot of time then again to go in uh, event business and do more. I And I don't know. I think I'm doing my event business since I'm 18, and now I'm 49, so quite long into this business and starting from only using Parkens until now with all this multifunctional fixtures. Yeah, so that's really cool. You do design work and you do production managing work and stuff like that? Yeah. Um, since a while now, I'm doing uh, production management for some festivals in Germany, mainly. Also designing shows, little shows, uh, mostly local stuff. And as well, of course, I'm... Uh, working as operator and also designer for this festival. I think we will see later some photos of it. Yeah, I mean, we could just show you a few photos now to, to maybe establish who you are. So uh, we have uh, quite a few images here from, uh, from what is it called, per Perucaville? Yeah, this is a festival called Perucaville. This is uh, well, some photos which are a little bit uh, ago and uh, was one of the early setups this was one of the crazy stages what we have. And uh, yeah, this is again a photo of, uh, I think it's, it's, it was far before COVID. This uh, stage was in the beginning as we started the work there. And yeah, you do, uh, now we you come do, a little uh, bit more close to, to what's newer here. Okay. <laughs> so you do production manage management and lighting on, on this festival? And lighting, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and this is uh, the design we used uh, the last year as well, or better said, uh, this was a design before COVID. Yeah. What we have had there and changed a little bit to last year. It looks yeah. pretty cool. It's nice work and uh, really interesting. Yeah. Let's say like this, what yeah. Is it? <laughs> what is it, all aircraft hangars or what is it? Uh, this it is um, a festival. Parukoville is a festival in Germany. Uh, it's the biggest EDM festival in Germany. It is hosted on a farm former military airport, which has now an active runway just next to this festival, which is um, used for Niederrhein Airport, which is a small local one. But still, there are, of course, um, international flights. Mostly Ryanair is going there. And uh, so it's really convenient for many of the DJs which arrive there and can come from Tomorrowland directly by plane because this festival is uh, parallel to Tomorrowland. So same weekend or same week? Yeah. 
Look, this festival is now cool. over three years, uh, three weekends, three years now, three weekends. Yeah, and this is um, the actual design which was run last year. We used their um, 60 Sharpie Plus from Clay Parky, and it was around 270 square meters of LED screen. Yeah, that's quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah, it looks really cool, really does. So uh, maybe you can show us how you how you work with that and how you work with uh, Grain MA3 on, on that uh, project. To tell the truth, uh, all this before was done with MA2, but uh, I adapt my whole MA2 show, what I used in MA2, I adapt to MA3. And uh, I think I'm one of these operators to say, I don't want to go back to MA2 because MA3 has so much potential things and there's so many cool things inside especially let's say recipes is for me an absolute game changer if i compare it with my ma2 show file where i have had tons of macros which just create the show and now i just have the sequence with recipes in it and it's working and yes it's such a massive speed improvement especially when creating and starting a show so even that, that how to deal with cloning that, uh, yeah i should say you, that that gives you a little bit more headroom to be creative i think yeah yeah that's really cool but uh, 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 it's no secret uh, between you and i we talked together uh, a few nights uh, ago and i've seen some of your show file and i can uh, i can t definitely tell the viewers it's it's quite a complex uh, piece of art uh, thomas has built so uh, so maybe we should uh, just have a look at it yeah let's dive into Let's see, um, my show file, I, I prepared everything in this file. So um, I have complex, complex views. Um, this is uh, the view I use during show, but even my starting views, uh, like the base view, which is called, my view is called based, is uh, for every show, it's similar. It has a structure with what I can work. So I have this uh, fixture sheet and, um, then there comes again a part which is uh, new in Grand Maze MA3, which is, for me, it's one of the amazing uh, features in there. It's the so-called selection grid. And um, it gives you so many opportunities to, to align all the fixtures in the right way. And uh, then in the end, you can create really nice looking views just with a selection grid and combination with a matrix. But I will come to this later, of course. And in this base view, for me, I have all the important things, what are needed. I have my sequence pools. Um, I started all my sequences from a different position. So it started with a uh, number 1,000. So I know that everything below 1,000, I could just easily throw away after it because I just created it for playing around, so this is so everything. Uh, everything you need is is above one thousand. Everything yeah. which is not supposed to be deleted. Yeah. So you can see here, I have um, my so-called master sequences, which just contain uh, some special functions like double speed, half speed. Um, it's like uh, move speed. It's like freezing. Uh, it's so special things like uh, dimmer master, preset master, uh, breaking stuff, haze, blow, and a panic function, um, which I can really recommend for everyone to have one panic um, sequence. And this panic sequence is. do nothing else than stop all movements, stop all effects, and just bring everything to home position, everything wide, everything on. Um, in case there is an emergency, until you, you find everything to stop, you just can start the sequence and the light is on and everybody can flee if needed. Luckily, I never needed this sequence, but uh, I all time have this sequence just in case it's needed. I'm sorry to interrupt, but uh, I need guests on this show to make it happen. So if you are a Grain MA3 programmer, I would love to hear from you. Uh, you don't have to be skilled. You can be brand new. That's fine with me. 
you can be working with theatre, you can be working with tours, you can do corporate, that's, that doesn't matter. As long as you want to be a guest on this show and we can uh, look into your show file the way we are doing today. So uh, please uh, sign up for the list below and uh, I will be in touch with you. So uh, let's, uh, let's continue. And then, of course, everything is sorted uh, into views. Um, so I have my all the dimmer sequences, what, what belongs to dimmer sequences, what belongs to position sequences, what to color, uh, beam, and my special busking sequences, what I have. All this is separated, so I have a fast overview over it and can see what they are doing. To the views, I have to say, um, I have a special setup now here in the views, which is used for um, the on-PC version, because here I don't have a desk with me, so I have to do everything clicking by mouse, so it might look a little bit that I'm searching. Um, the views are equal for consoles, and for on-PC, I can change uh, the login to a console, and then the view just look a little bit different, so it's a little bit um, stretched. But if you see in the end, the pool view, it looks absolutely the same. There is only more information on the screen because it's just bigger. So I can easily switch my views between on PC and console views. This is done. I can go to this uh, maybe directly. This is nothing special. It's just change a user and enable some settings like command bar and um, the uh, encoder bar, this is all what it's doing, and it ch just change the user. So that means that uh, no, matter, no matter what kind of console you're on, you can basically yeah. just uh, select the view and you know where everything is and, 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 and it's Correct. adapted to the new, uh, more uh, limited screen real estate. Yeah, and it makes it really much faster to find everything because I know where everything is and I can just easily go there, and I don't have to create a new view. Um, as well as some, here in this base view, I have some other things like the universe view, so I can see which universes are used or which are granted, which are not granted. I have some system informations, which really help sometimes in trouble to see why something may, maybe not is working like it should be. And uh, another main view of me is the so-called group view. Um, basically, in this group view, I have everything what is related to groups. So my main groups are all on this page. So I, I normally have to set up only this few groups to get my show working, and another view with groups, which is uh, some special groups like uh, left, right, up, down, uh, in, out, center, something like that. And at, as you see at the moment, it's only left and right because this is my master show file on, on what I work. I go there normally and just click the button. Uh, I have a macro for it. I just clear all my views, uh, my, my groups, and then I can start from scratch. And then, I will then speak the, as well the, about... The file is, is, is going to build itself, or how does it work? Yeah, I, I will come to this, how the file is built, and uh, and why I set it up like this. Let, let's say um, I use as base with 10 different groups. I have the groups are called G1 to G0. Um, I should maybe call it even G10, but uh, it is from my past where I used in uh, MA2, so I just adapted like it was before. Uh, the groups are divided I must say all my groups are symmetrical groups. So I, I have in the top, I have the, uh, the groups which are not symmetrical, which are just for selecting. And the groups all below are symmetrical groups and they are divided into dimmer parts and color parts. The reason why I create dimmer parts and color parts for example, if I have a, a fixture like Roby Spider with several instances of color, I want maybe that the dimmer just not go through every little instance, that the dimmer is going on the top layer. So this is why I have a dimmer group, which is on the top. And the color layer 
is the layer down, which have all the color instances of these fixtures. So I'm free to do chases in color over all this free, free or how many instances I use. And uh, it's absolutely individual to that what I have in the dimmer groups. All the color groups are written in the sequences which with colors I'm using in my show file. And uh, the dimmer groups are used in every other functions like uh, dimmer, position, um, gobo, beams, zoom, and all this, this belongs all to the dimmer instance. And I have one special group called gblind, which contains all the blind stuff what I have in like uh, audience blinder, like sun strips, so only black and white fixtures. And I have a so-called strobe group, which is in this case um, nearly similar like uh, one of, a part of the other groups. And uh, this group contain only um, the strobe channels of a strobe. This group can be doubled with another group, this is not a problem, but in this basic show file, I'm using uh, the Martin Atomic, which has a background and a strobe, and the strobe has no color information, so I just keep it as an individual um, strobe group. I need this group because I have a strobe sequence which needs this group as reference. Then I have um, some groups here which are called uh, ASM, which means like this is an asymmetrical group with all fixtures uh, I'm using. Right now it contains only my dummy fixture. And uh, uh, I better switch on the shortcuts, make it faster. And uh, one special group like M-Step, which is a symmetrical selection of this whole stage. And then for sure, I have this like uh, what I need for front light, DJ booth light, and whatever I need on special light. And the special things are on the right side. And I have some, as you can see here, I'm sorry, it's German because I'm German. It's called <laughs> Arbeitsgruppe, which is translated into work group. Um, I use this three groups if I just make a selection. So, for example, like when I'm working with, with Roby Spider, I just create a group with everything in. And after I created this group with everything in, I start splitting this group and can that, after that make a symmetrical selection more easy. That's why I have these working groups. The split groups are symmetrical groups in this uh, block selection, or here in this case, it's a left selection and a right selection, again, split it in uh, dimmer and color groups. Why I use this kind of groups, I come to it later. All the other groups are groups which are created within my show file from, for example, here, there are tons of groups, but they normally contain only a dummy fixture inside. So maybe, Why maybe I you need to explain the, the dummy fixture. Yeah, a dummy fixture for me is a fixture um, which I, I use a dummy fixture in my show file to keep it as placeholder in a group. I need a dummy fixture in a group because my show file relies a lot on worlds. And if I have no fixture in a group and assign this group to a world, the world is like full. But what I want is if a group has contained no fixture, it should keep everything off what is not in this world. And that's why I need dummy fixtures. And here I need this dummy fixtures in individual groups just because from these groups there will be created worlds. In my opinion, it's it's a logical thing. If I have nothing selected, it, it is full. Yeah, of course. So, and of course, this group contains not only dummy fixtures, it contains the selected fixtures of uh, this action, what I want. But this is done all by uh, a macro stuff, which I will show in 
in basic a little bit later. Then another important part for me are the MA tricks. I have uh, made a set what, what I use, which is like a group of two, three, and so on, blocks, wings, mirror function, odd even, which, which I need maybe for pre-programming or whatever. And of course, I have this uh, MA tricks master one and two, which contains tons of MA tricks, but all this MA tricks, I, I work with, with macros on it. So I can change, you will see it later when I show my show view, that I can change nearly every function on the fly. This is busking. So, and this is all manipulated by macros. And of course, uh, I have some filters, not really much. I need filters really sell them, and if I need them, I just uh, create them on the, on the fly. And uh, for sure, worlds, which are a really important part of my show. And uh, normally on the desk, I keep on the right screen this uh, view with groups, and on the left screen, I keep then the preset view. But before I show this preset view, I will go back to my group view and uh, there is one special tab, it's called group preset fixture. In this, or let, let's say this groups contains only one fixture. Um, I, I would call it preset fixture. Um, so for example, I used once in a show the elation darts. So I set up every preset of a dart what I need. So all the colors, all the gobos, all the focus points, all prism, all rotation speed, and so on. And I start this as preset. And after I get some different fixtures, I throw the darts away. But I keep all time one fixture from each lamp in my show file. I, I put it in the DMX patch on a far address like 1000 or what uh, universe 1000 and give it a um, fixture ID of 8000 something. So I all time keep one fixture in my show file from each fixture I used. So this means in my workflow, and now I come back to presets, because nearly all my preset pools are made with uh, global presets. As you can see here in the color view, these are global presets. Global preset means I have a fixture and equal how many of this fixture type I have. This preset works with every of this fixture. So for example, I have one elation darts or a show with 10 elation darts. Now I come to another stage and I have 20 elation darts. And because I have a global preset, all my darts can use this preset because it's the same fixture type. Of course, I could do it with cloning, but uh, this is kind of magic um, with using global presets. I don't use everywhere global presets for sure. So for example, it makes no sense to keep selective presets in positions. So I don't want, or maybe it's it's good to explain what global presets do yeah, uh, it's compared a, to positions. It's a really good thing to, to explain to, to, to new users, what, what is selective, what is global, and what is universal, and, and and, and, and why do you use global, for instance? Okay, then I should start at first with uh, the universal fixture, which is the main fixture in MA. A universal fixture is a fixture which contains all attributes which can be used normally in fixtures where it makes sense. So every fixture, for example, has a dimmer. So a dimmer is definitely a universal attribute. Not every fixture has pan and tilt, but if this fixture has pan and tilt, it's equal. So it all goes only from 100% to 
from plus 100% to minus 100%. So I can use this as well as a universal preset. A zoom, which is also in this universal fixture, can also have uh, from 0 to 100. A RGB color can also have only red with 100% or red with 0%. So it's also a universal fixture. But I, I would better not speak about uh, color and, and use it as universal preset. Uh, it has some difficulties, which I don't like. So that's why I better don't speak about this. Yeah, it's, it's For a me, it's a bit more difficult most... to adjust the, 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 the single fixture in a universal preset than in a global preset. Yeah. So for me, I keep as universal preset only the dimmer values. So all my dimmer values, as you can see here, are universal. Um, there's a little bit rubbish inside, which is called dim stom. This is a preset which doesn't work correct. And But maybe you noticed as well that I have in my positions, I have as well a universal preset. And I use a lot this function release. Um, so I store all time in all my sequences somewhere a release in. Uh, this will I will explain also when I'm in my show view why I have this release function and what it did. Then I, it's, it's better to explain there when you can see it visually what it does. Yes, of course. And then the other step is the so-called selective preset, which is labeled with an S here. Selective preset means I have one fixture which do exactly what is written in this preset. So, for example, I have my 10 darts elation. No, elation darts. And uh, I have them hanging in a row and point them to a center position. So every lamp, every fixture has an individual value of pun and tilt. And so this is stored selective. If I get now... 10 more fixtures to it, which are hanging bet all between them or on the other side, I have to adjust the center point for all fixtures itself. So in this case, I, I want that every fixture is doing something different. So this is what is doing selective. And then is coming this global thing, which say every fixture of the same type is doing exactly the same. So if I have 10 fixtures in red, I can patch in another 10 fixtures of the same type and they just keep internal the same preset because it's a global preset. Global means for all the same type of fixtures. Yes. And this is why I keep all time from every fixture, one fixture, in my show file, let's say for colors, it's not a big problem just to set up this 15 colors I needed here. But if I want to define the strobe speed or the speed of gobo rotation, the position of a gobo, I don't want to set it up all time again. And that's why I keep all time something. Because if you see, for example, my beam presets, which are for sure much more. So I have all the prisms, all the prism rotations. I have uh, the, all the shutter instances. And if I would scroll down here, you see I have this uh, frost and, and iris and effect wheel if, if needed as well. So this is how I keep my presets all done. And so I really need only this few presets to work fine and then everything is working. Yeah, and, and maybe just to close off, the one about uh, global uh, presets is in, uh, in any GranMA console, when you delete the last fixture of a kind, uh, the console forgets all the reference, all the colors, all everything, and you, you basically have to start over. Yeah. If you delete all the fixtures from the same type, all your presets are gone. Yes. Sometimes you have to learn on the hard way, which I do as well. So <laughs> I have all one. time, not only one copy of the show file. All right. I'm not so crazy like uh, some programmers which store on 
on 10 different sticks the same show file. Um, I know so that some that, are going... You, you see that on, on, on larger festivals, sometimes they show up with a, with a small USB hub and they put it into the console and they have four or five uh, USB drives on it, which is fine by me. I mean, people can do whatever they want, but uh, it seems a little excessive. But uh, sometimes also yeah. people don't store an external copy of their show file and then you get into trouble when the disk dies. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and uh, the rest here in my presets are all presets which I marked as selective, so I, I changed the, the behavior of this group and make it selective as a preset mode. And I, if I'm not mistaken, but um, the default setting of uh, the beam presets is selective as far as I know. So I changed it to global. But only that the pool is global doesn't mean I, can, I can't store uh, selective presets. And I can store even selective presets in the universal pool, which is uh, contains dimmer values. Yeah, you, you so can I can have store, both. I can have all three, universal, yeah, yeah, selective, yeah, yeah. and global. I'm oh, sorry. Um, yeah, I have one of these all pools uh, already filled with some presets. Uh, here it's just, uh, it's called Gobo 1 Store Focus, so I can store for every Gobo a focus position if it's different. I really need it seldom, uh, it's, it's not so useful. It's not, it's and, more, uh, every Gobo wheel has its own focus position. Yeah. Yeah, my, this, the point why I use uh, several um, different focus points is I don't separate between gobo wheels. I just say I use in my show file as maximum 14 different gobos, and it doesn't mind if they come from wheel one or wheel two. Yeah. So I define it, and then I'm fine with everything. The main in my show file happened in this so-called preset master. Uh, it has, again, lower level views like a dimmer, position, gobo, color beams, and so on and so on. And it contains just some presets. And a lot of things in my show file is copy from one preset to another preset. This is mainly all what I'm doing. And I have this master i call master preset i call them i have this master preset stored in all the sequences okay the same for sure i have with uh, the all presets yeah which i need sometimes i have even uh everything stored here um i don't more I think about it, I don't understand why I use all this all presets here because all presets was used in Gradmate 2 for doing a lot of things with timing, which is not needed here. Because okay. timing can be done on a complete different way and on a much more convenient and more comfortable way in MA3. In MA3, you mean? Yeah, yeah. In MA2, it was complicated to, to do all this different uh, timing options. And in MA3, I have MA tricks. And with MATRIX, I'm so flexible. It's unbelievable. Okay. For sure, for presets, um, I use the phasers. Um, I really created um, an all pool for modified phaser, which is similar like uh, all pool four, but it's complete empty. I didn't find any need for at the moment filling it. I use in all my phasers i have to think about all the time because for me this is it's like an effect um i have yes. <laughs> i use normally in phasers only really the basic stuff like the sinus of course i have several uh, items here um but it's just my personal like um it's not needed really and i don't have to explain why i have all this um and even from position position phasers you see it's really really low it's just this um i must say only this six presets are used for my show 
All the other is like is copy this to this. It's doing nothing else. And as you see, my phasers contains only one universal fixture, so it it has nothing in. It's a pre-built um, phasers I use here. Expect uh, pun and tilt. I have here a special one called pun zine TS and uh, tilt zine PS, which means like it's just basically this this pen preset, but the tilt function is stopped. Uh, because I want a clear so you, pen so and you, I want a clear so you can pen. combine them to, to a circle? Or... No, th this is exactly not the one what I don't want. I want, if I want to use a pen function, I want a clear pen and not that there might be in background something that makes a tilt. That's oh. why I have a stomp on it. Yeah, and here in the top, I have uh, two fly out presets and they are selective. Um, I don't like the way how this universal flyout in MA3 is working. So I create, before every show, I create my flyout myself. Um, it has to do with my workflow and it has to do with why a flyout should, or how a flyout should look like. That's why I created my flyout. This is a macro I will definitely speak later about and explain exactly how this flyout is working in my show file and what I can do with this. Okay. And further on, the next view is the so-called pools view. The pool view contains all the pools like macros, like plugins, like uh, configurations, like views, images, pages, scribbles and appearances. And right now, I really must say I really love the scribbles, but the scribble pool is empty. The reason why it's empty for me is because I can't assign a scribble to an appearance. Um, it is a big wish for me that I can assign a scribble to an appearance, which makes then coming to the show view, and I will switch just to the position view. I have positions here. And I would like to have a scribble of this position, what I, what I have, because right now on my pictures I use here means like everything down, everything down spread it, everything down spread to the middle, everything center, x1, x2, everything up, everything up spread, and so on and so on. And I want to be more flexible in it. And as soon as I can just change a scribble, and uh, assign a scribble to an appearance, I could use it here in the layout pool. Because the big issue is, I can assign a scribble to a sequence, I can assign a scribble to a preset, but as soon as I assign a sequence to a layout pool, it doesn't show the scribble. And this is okay, one so of the big issues for me. Yeah, that seems like a, like a limitation in the software then. That, that makes it's, it's, yeah, yeah, it's... I already reported it to MA and requested as feature. So okay. let's see what it what it comes out from this. So but yeah. back to the pool view. So this is all what is inside the pool view. And as you can see, my macro pool is also a little bit bigger, has some different views. Uh, I have on this first page, the first macro page is nearly all the macros what I use for show start or in quick access. It's like save the show. It doesn't do something different like select the drive, save the show, select the drive, save the show, and select again the first drive. Drive one is all time the internal hard disk. Drive two is the first USB port. If I have uh, more than one USB port, I would edit it a little bit more. But be aware, everyone out there, if you store on a USB drive, it takes time. So every drive you use, it takes a lot of time to store on. Then I have one macro which uh, makes the speed all to all the speed masters in case uh, I totally messed up with my speed master. I can just press this and everything goes to the level of uh, 60 BPM, which is the normal level. Okay. 
Um, then I have this macros which change the views, like I have an on PC view, a console view, and in case that uh, everybody is fucked up, I have this admin view which contains nearly nothing inside. And then I have some special macros which creates my worlds and uh, assigns some fader buttons, assigns the speed masters. And I really also have some creator macros, but uh, they just create uh, some special presets, which I don't like to do with recipes. Uh, maybe in future it's not needed anymore, I don't know, but for me at the moment, it's a good feeling to have this like it is. Ah, and that are, is nearly the basic stuff in, the basic macro stuff in my show file. Of course, I have this flyer generator. I will come back to this later. And I have a really horrible macro, which is here. It's a show reset. Uh, yeah, I should really make an, uh, request there if I really want to execute this macro because it's dangerous. This macro stop every sequence in my show file and and build a standard base view in the end. To run this macro, it takes around 10 minutes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, but this it if if you really messed up with everything after programming where you don't know if I just created a sequence and, and leave something on there or just do some changes there which are not needed normally. And if you totally mess up, you can just start this macro. Just do it in front of, before the show and it's working. Okay. It clears everything. It uh, set everything back to normal. So this is like calm down macro. Before the show, just use 10 minutes time. It's also time to have something to eat. When you start, so is it, is it is it actually a macro you used before the show, or is it something you almost never touch? I use it normally before the shows, um, not before every show. So, if, for example, if I have uh, several shows after each other, I use it only before the first show, um, because as I start, as I'm doing a lot of programming stuff before, I want to get back to a normal state. If I want, if I just adjust some resets, I don't use this macro. Okay. And I mean, this macro is not really big. It just off every sequence and then load a plugin. I have all this uh, functions done in a plugin. And I, I write this plugin myself, which then starts the show by scratch. Then all the other macros behind here are macros I used for the show. And here you can see, for example, I have labeled some uh, views with just XX2548, which is some empty pools, and it start on on this where that I know on which pool ID I'm working on. I have the show used macros, uh, which is also really basic, like freeze on, freeze off, double speed on, double speed off, and so on and so on. And uh, and here are some special stuff like show control player off, uh, show control is player one. And um, maybe I should say, especially in electronic music, you use a software called show control. Show control is a software which is connected to the Pioneer Pro DJ network. And you can see on a computer or on a screen, whatever you have there, on the front of house, you can see what the DJ is doing. So you can see which song will come next. You see the waveform of the song, which means you can see exactly when a drop is coming. So when you have to switch off the light, when you stop the light, so you can see everything in advance. And as well, if you don't know the, the DJ with whom you're working, you can see which song he is playing next. And so you can understand is it a song which is a little bit faster, a little bit slower? Maybe uh, it has, the song has a name, Red House, whatever. As you know, okay, I better use a color red. So you can prepare in advance. And Show Control has also a functionality to exchange details in the show itself. Um, I can't show Show Control at the moment here because it's a software which, which is running only on Mac and uh, I'm using at the moment uh, Windows here. 
And show control can also send the BPM data. So if a song has, for example, 150 BPM, and you are lazy to tap 150 BPM, you could just say, okay, show control, send me your BPM. And this is why I have these macros, which activate then the BPM for me. So if the song has 150 BPM, all my speed masters are going to 150 BPM. And it's working fine. Of course, the most important BPM tap is this button here, <laughs> the manual <laughs> thing. Yeah. yeah, this is why I have a so-called uh, learn. Yeah. Um, and I can explain why I have a macro for using learn, because you have normally for the Speedmasters an executor, a, a button function, which is called learn. But as you see in this macro, when I open it, it contains three different Speedmaster I control with it. It will change in future. It will be some more because I found out I, I will work with a little bit more. So I have special functions which are going to special speed masters. So I can control the speed of this function individual, but also can tab it all in once. That is why I use a macro for this learn because I can use several speed masters at the same time. But you can you can still assign the learn macro to a physical button, right? Yeah, the learn macro is, and you will see it on the show view. The learn button or the learn macro is assigned to uh, a button. Okay. And then the next is coming all this uh, individual macros for my show. Uh, most of them are doing basically the same they select a group and store a group into a world. As I said soon before, I use a world-based show file. What this exactly is doing, you will see when I explain the show views. Okay. And then uh, I have another view, which is just for 3D. It just shows 3D and I can use it for selecting things. So I have some macros here, which world is selection, world is full, which basically do, I select this lamps, for example, and say world is selection. So I only see this fixtures I just use with. Uh, it is really useful just for setting up the groups and for preparing special stuff. There, this world is selection is really useful. And another world macro is like world full, which set world one again. Another little macro um, I use in this view is, uh, maybe I can just show what it does here. Uh, okay, I will do it different. Uh, no, no. Let's say I choose this. And I just say this selection. So I have this fixtures here in front. It's like um, 16 fixtures. And this macro just do something, it shows me, is my selection really symmetrical, how I do it? This is just what this macro is doing. So it, it just runs work on, on all the different fixtures you might select? Yeah, it works on, okay. if I select different fixtures, it works on the different fixtures. So if I select nothing, like I go to work full again, you can see it's only working on the fixtures I selected. You can right. see it because it's white, it's it's doing a highlight. Um, this macro is calling a plugin because in MA3 at the moment, uh, there is a problem with calculating, which, which doesn't work really well. So I have to use a plugin. And I can show this plugin, which is also not a secret. It's the plugin with really few lines only. It just make thing like highlight on, set an MA trick to wing of two. And then the point is coming, what is not possible in the macro itself at the moment, because I don't know why at the moment there is no user variable, which set selection count. To run this macro, I need to know how many fixtures I selected. So 
This is why it does this selected fixture count. This variable is possible to use in Lua, but not in, in the macro itself. And it does nothing more than, aha, uh -huh, you selected, for instance, 16 fixtures. It say from one until it reached number 16, do the following. Just press the button next. Wait 0 0.2 seconds and again the button next. And after it's finished, the, just reset the selection matrix and set the highlight off again. This is all what this plugin is doing. That's clever. It was more convenient to do just as a macro in MA2, but so I learned something new because I was never a real Lua user, but now I try to dive into Lua to see if it's working fine or not. Okay. And uh, does, ah, yeah, I have had um, a user variable in the beginning, but I deselected it. Uh, there is an issue if you run this macro with nothing selected. Then it uh, keeps on going, 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 because selection is zero, and uh, zero in this plugin means like do it without stop. Yeah, so it's like a loop. Yeah, this was working as macro version different, so that's why I have this request there, but I know that I run this macro only when there is something selected. But is it going to the console if, if you run it uh, with zero selection? No, it runs only in the background and continues and continues and continues. And it's a pain to stop this plugin then. Okay. And the other things are only selecting the view between uh, the standard view, um, I don't know how it's called, Gobo view, the render quality and line. I use, uh, and now you see here was an error message. I can show it again. Here's an error message. Uh, this error message comes up because I have the other screens deselected. So if I would open screen two and three, then there will be no error message because it just uh, write a property, the render quality to this. And so this uh, one is basically uh, based on a full size console. Yeah, correct. And um, I can explain why I use the line view instead of this more convenient or for everyone loved Gobo view or Gobo shaded or high quality or I don't know how, how they are all called. I don't need this because I can imagine what I see. I know that it it looks like it should do. I I only want to see is the fixture on, is it off, is the color right, is it not right. I don't need to see if the fixture is strobing or not. I can see it in real life. Uh, on other softwares, because I must say, all for my pre-programming, I use Depends or Visivic as software. Depends I use when I have a Grandma 3, and uh, Visivic I use if I use uh, Grandma 2. Why the, why the two different? Um, the point is, Depends can be connected to um, MA2 as well, but it use Artnet as input connection. And to, to get uh, Artnet working, you can't use it on the on-PC version without any hardware. And uh, in Gram S3, I have a VSCI, and this VSCI uh, gain access to every parameter I needed only for visualizing. And uh, Depends is using for MF freezes whiskey, Visivic do the same, but the render quality in Visivic is not really nice. And all this um, artwork I do and uh, presentations, all the renderings I create are done in Visivic. The quality is definitely much, much higher than in Visivic. So, and if this, uh, uh, how's it called? Uh, yeah, this this update process in Visivic, as soon as my license there expire, I will not renew it because I don't need it anymore. Okay. I have then a, a state, and uh, if I have an MA2 console, okay, I can use it. But then maybe I don't have the most modern fixtures. I don't know, but 
This doesn't matter. Okay, so much for Thomas Copper's first uh, half of his uh, show file. I hope you learned something. I mean, there's a lot to dig into here if you are a new user or if you uh, got inspired by this. Uh, I want to thank you, Thomas, for uh, for this uh, first episode. We're going to continue next week. So if you're not subscribed to Event Lighting, now is a good time to do so. And uh, you can uh, give the video a like. It's going to indicate to YouTube that you like the video and uh, you want more of this kind of content. And it's going to support my channel as well. So I hope I see you next week for the next episode of Thomas, where he's going to dig even deeper into his show file and show us how it works and, and how he actually uh, uses it to make a show. So I hope to see you next week. Bye-bye.